go. All right, we're getting ready. This was Seth saying Gabe. Excited? Yeah. This is my first time. All right, we're live. No, it's not my first time. <laughs> okay, so. First time. Right. Does it look like it's my first time? Uh, so, welcome uh, to On Set. Uh, we are live on YouTube at noon for the last time. So, for the last, how long? We've been doing this for almost four years. I know, it's crazy. Uh, we've been streaming for maybe a year at noon, but we're changing our time slot to. Uh, to five o'clock, so we're going to upgrade uh, to the evening time slot. So, uh, which, uh, oh, but we're taking a little bit of break while we reshoot things. Make comments here about things you want to see because I'm changing it up a little bit. In fact, this is going to be a little bit different. Um, a lot of times when we're doing this, we we try to just kind of do go over some of the basics of photography. Here, we're going to actually try to go through an entire photo shoot, and we'll try to produce a really good image, hopefully. Uh, uh, at the end, I do have the assistance of the amazing uh, Jim who is with us from Hasselblad Braun. Um, and if you don't know Hasselblad Braun, you shouldn't be here. No, I'm just kidding. No, they, they make very, very uh, fine photography lighting, Braun color, slash cameras, Hasselblad. And we will use them today. If you have technical questions, I'll answer as best I can. Or you can talk to Jim after. Um, if you have them online, write them in the chat, obviously. And we could try to answer them like that. Um, but essentially, you're looking at pretty much the premiere of uh, lighting equipment, I'll say. This is... This is uh, Top, top tier stuff. Um, so, and if you are actually going to work in the beauty slash fashion industry, there's a lot of things that um, come into play where you would want like top tier equipment, which is you want the, the best color, you want the most accurate, uh, you know, uh, color in your packs, most accurate power, re repetition. These things uh, come into play, and this is the reason why I chose to do beauty with the brown color today. Um, and uh, we're going to play around with a lot of fun stuff. So hopefully you guys will enjoy it. Um, I don't know if I said it yet, but I'm Daniel Norton. This is Dave. And by the way, we have uh, new t-shirts made by Seth. He made them last night. The Arts and Crafts Project. Thanks, Seth, on the Mighty Mixer. Um, <laughs> he was out there spray painting the, for the, for the on-set shirts for the, the final daytime on-set. We're, we're going punk slash after dark on-set after this. So get ready, guys. Um, by the way, if you do watch, if you stream, because I know a lot of people stream from uh, different time zones, and maybe this is nighttime for you and you're happy, and then 5 o'clock is going to be late, remember that the videos stay up, so you guys can watch them the next day. Um, and if you absolutely hate the change, then let us know that too, because maybe we'll do something about it. Probably not, but maybe. You never know. Uh, <laughs> so we do have the infamous uh, Marissa today as our model, and Suki busting out the makeup. And uh, I guess I'm gonna, we're going to start off this first one. I'm, I'm, we're going to go with kind of a, a very clean... Uh, modern feel with the with the lighting and the, and the makeup really simple uh very bright not white stark background but kind of warm and and uh, and, and soft so uh what we're going to do is we're going to set up um i think is our key light or our primary light we're going to use an octagon uh we have the uh was it three footer we have a three foot uh 75 centimeters Bronco, color they like to get you with the centimeters so you have to do a little math when you work at it but it's about three feet uh, octagon box and remember that when you're lighting somebody, the, the hardness or softness of light, if you watched Photo 101 last week, <laughs> was that last week, uh, is, is uh, created by the size of the box, right? the size of the source. The bigger the source, the softer the light will be. Soft meaning that the shadow transition is a more gentle. So this is going to give us more detail in a lot of sense in, in our shadows because they're going to bleed down and be a little more clean. Um, also, this has got nice diffusion on it. It's going to create nice skin tone. What's popular right now is, uh, you know, kind of shiny makeup. Some of this is going to be shiny. We're going to play with that a little bit and play with the shine. We want highlights. One thing that's important, and, and I find that people uh, uh, forget this when they're learning because they get so paranoid about shine or whatever, is you do want highlights. Highlights and shadow are what add three-dimensionality to things. What we want, though, is we want control. We don't want to blow out our highlights necessarily. We want, though, if, if I'm selling shiny makeup, I want people to know it's shiny, right? I don't want it to look matte. So we're going to play with the idea of pushing it to the shininess without going too far. Uh, that's the plan anyways. We do have this giant uh, four by six here that I sleep in sometimes uh, when I do a little mountain climbing. No, we're going to use this possibly as a fill light. Um, that's why we have it behind the camera. And uh, we're going to use it later with a really cool thing called the edge mask. You watch that at 3 o'clock. It'll be fun. And then we're going to light the background. We're going to keep this one really simple um, and work our way through it. So how close are we? That's it, by the way. We're oh, we're ready. That's, by the way, how you say it. So if you ever wanted how you say that, I mean, Seth is like, get ready. But, but, but. I just mentioned that we're using the Cirrus monolights. Oh, right. So we are going to use the Cirrus monolights. Uh, this is uh, 800? 800, 800. Uh, 800 Cirrus, which are their monolights. We're also going to use a score of pack. 
So we've got a mixture of equipment. I'll try to uh, say everything I'm using as I go. If I don't say what something is, Jim will remind me. No, no, if, if I don't say what something is, you guys can ask and I will certainly tell you, uh, be your, whether you be online or here. We are shooting with uh, the X1D Hasselblad with a 90 millimeter lens. This is uh, Hasselblad's relatively new uh, mirrorless uh, medium, format. medium format camera. So we've got the large, large sensor, 16 50, bit, 50 megapixels, 50 megapixels you know. 16-bit capture, that's the important part, okay? This can't be stressed enough. 16-bit is a huge difference between even 14-bit, and a lot of cameras are actually 8-bit interpolated to 14-bit. That's how many colors you have, that's your transition. More color equals more accuracy, better. That's what's one of the big selling factors here. Sure, 50 megapixels is a lot of megapixels, that's good to have, they have 100 megapixel as well. Yeah. Not in this, in this. So if you need that, uh, 50s, Fine for what we're doing, but the 16 bits would really sell me to this. Yes. What would that bubble like be in like 72? Uh, yeah. Oh, good. 72. Yeah, the sensor is yeah. about 50% bigger than. Uh, okay, I'm going to have you sit. Actually, you can probably sit in that chair if you feel comfortable in it. Do you like that chair? Okay. Here. Tobacco? I have chocolate. It's over there. Okay, that's probably good. It's just sitting on the, I rolled it up. It should be right, no, no, it's by Seth. We're looking for the gel right now. So basically, it's good that David knows where stuff is. Uh, that way we're not scrambling. We're tethering also with USB 3C. Yeah. Okay. Okay, here we go. Okay, I'm gonna push this back a bit for me. Okay, cool. All right, guys, so. Okay, okay, that's perfect. Fantastic, okay. So I'm looking through the camera and I'm gonna line this guy up, there she is. I'm gonna shoot horizontally just because of the, the, I feel like it. People sometimes ask me why I shoot horizontally, because I want to. Uh, no, the reason why I'm doing it here is because I'm, uh, I'm actually, yeah, I'm going to do, oops, okay. I'm going to do, uh, all right, I didn't set anything there, and that looks pretty terrible. That's what happens when you press the button really quickly. There you go. No, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn the flash off, or I'm going to go over here and just take my controller off. It's the easiest way to do it. What I want to do is establish an exposure in the room that is uh, dark enough that none of the ambient light is going to affect my shot. Okay, so what I want is ISO 100, and I want to go 250th of a second, and I'm going to go F8. Now, why that? A lot of times, this is actually, you can sync actually higher if you want. Yeah, yeah you can go at the higher shutter speed. Two, this is just normally where I shoot here. You want to go high enough on your shutter speed so that uh, you're, you're at your maximum sync speed, generally, unless it's crazy high like it is on this where I'm not going to worry about it. And you want to set your ISO low so that you have the, the finest, you know, the least amount of noise. So F8, so I have enough detail. Remember that uh, this is a beauty shot. I don't want to just have her eyeball in focus and nothing else. I want to get her whole head in focus. So uh, that should give us a decent amount of focus. I'll check that as I go. But I'm going to take a shot like this. It's actually shallower than uh, DSLR. Yeah, the focus is going to seem more shallow uh, with, a, with a medium format camera. Okay, so we are tethered into focus, which is Hasselblad's... Uh, software. This is the soft. This is free. Um, you you use this to, to capture. We usually use uh, other software. I can't mention. No, no, we usually use other software uh, when we're using other cameras. But you can now use focus with DSLRs. I believe. It doesn't, no, it doesn't yeah, capture. Tethering. You can't, you can't tether, tether, but you can use it to sort and stuff. So if you have a mixture of uh, uh, cameras, you can certainly use that. But this is their free tethering software. So if you want to tether a Hasselblad, this is the way you do it. Um, you can see all the camera controls over here on the on the side. You can see my black frame, which is very exciting to see, I'm sure. Um, and now we want to set our light. So we know that we want um, F8, right, out of our key light. So first we'll set it up. So uh, Dave's going to set that up, right? We're going to go uh, box right here. So Dave's going to use a C-stand. We're going to uh, bring the, I don't think we have a sandbag, so we can probably just put it right here. Unless we have a sandbag, do we? Um, there's not one, there's no sandbag. Yeah. Yeah, if there's no sandbag, then we're probably just going to put it next to the camera, which should be fine. Yeah, I got it. For the background? For the background. Yeah. It's okay. We still need it. I'll take it. All right. So we're going to put this actually on the background. So we're going to just put the light like right here because we can push it really close. One cool thing about C-stands is they don't take up a whole lot of space. 
because uh, of their design. So we're just going to get this thing like kind of right over camera and tip down. This is going to give us a nice even light across the face. Now, you'll, it's a decently sized light, but we're still going to move it in as close as possible. Why? Moving in close is going to make the light larger. Larger equals softer, but also it's going to increase the light fall off. It's going to go to dark quicker, which means we'll keep more of the light off the background. I'm not going to have all the light off the background. I want to get a little bit back there, um, but uh, we'll get a decent amount. I think we'll go a little closer, maybe. Yeah. And also, I think you can be heard be taller, or I'll just get lower. Oh, I think I could be taller. See, she could be taller. Did you actually get taller? Yeah. Yeah, we can turn the model lights on. So what's pretty cool, Jim was just showing me this because I didn't use it until this point. Um, there is a uh, software here, which uh, you can get. It's for free, I'm assuming, that yeah. controls the lights. The yeah. lights are controlled on the, Wi-Fi. yeah, these are on Wi-Fi. So I can kick on the modeling lights. Mm -hmm. That should have done it. No, I'm going to go a, here. Uh, it's a pulse head, and we're using scrotum. Oh, they're in standby. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put my modeling lights on, which I think I just did. Oh, I just turned them off. Thank you. It's good to have an audience here. Always work with audiences. It's important. OK. All right, modeling light is on. Modeling light allows us to see. Now, if you intend to shoot with the modeling light, what do I need to do now? That's right. I'm going to take another shot to make sure that the modeling light's not affecting my picture, because this is pretty bright. So I just want to make sure it's not going to affect me. Actually, she comes up a little bit. So I'm going to, I'm going to have to either close down the lens, which is what I probably will do. I think I'll go to f11. OK, I'll take another shot. OK, now we have a black frame again, right? Remember that you have to consider these things. When, when you're working, you want to make sure that, uh, that you have yourself set up in a way that I think I might manually focus too, just because I like to. Good. All right, so now I'm not taking a shot yet, though. I was just looking. So we know the frame, frame is black. I want to uh, get my light set up, so I'm going to now bring my uh, shutter speed up to 250, set my ISO to 100 on my light meter. This is a Sekonic 308U uh, something. I didn't read it before I put it up, so I forget, even though I say it every week. <laughs> this is the Sekonic meter. You can use whatever meter you got. If you don't have a light meter, you could simply make a photo, then adjust for it. But why buy a bronchial lights if you can't afford a light meter? Like, what's going on here? Come on, get a light meter. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to point the meter at the, at the light. F9, so I need to give it more power. Turn me up a bit. Is it, um, oh, That's going up in tenths, right? You're going up, yeah. Yep. All right, so I'm using the controller to bring it up. 11. Now I'm at F11. So says the light meter. But like I say every single time, no matter what the light meter says, I always do a test shot, then I adjust from there, because the light meter is saying F11. Uh, my camera is at f11, so let's see if those two things are going to be in sync with each other, so, or if they're just simply Backstreet Boys. See, Backstreet Boys in sync. So I made that joke. Yeah. See, so I made that. All right. Uh oh. Dave said stand by. Is the other light on back there? Is that what happened? I don't think so. It's on, but not. I guess it's up to you. Yeah. Okay. So. Now we've got our base exposure. I actually think it's a smidge on the dark side for what I want to do. Marissa looks good, which is pretty unusual, actually. So already we're going in the right direction. Um, uh, so I'm actually going to turn my, pat my light up a smidge. I brought it up one tenth of a stop. I'm also going to move a little closer, because I feel like it. This does have focus peaking, so you can uh, use that to assist in your focusing. OK, that's better, I think, exposure-wise. I moved closer to it, so it got brighter. No, that's not true. It's not because I moved. I turned the pack up, remember. I'm not going to have you look up quite so much, though, I don't think. OK. Here we go. So now, yep, that's perfect. I'm looking, I'm looking. Perfect. Good. All right. Now, what you're noticing here, too, is, by the way, if you see me do these demos in the past, a lot of times I use a beauty dish, because why wouldn't you use a beauty dish for beauty photography? Right? That's what the name's right in the thing, right? But when you use such a small source, you almost have to always have to work their chin up a bit. Otherwise, you're going to get terrible, terrible shadows. This thing's three feet. Marissa's head is not, I mean, she's got a big head. It's not that big. So we've got nice soft light. She can keep her chin down. It looks good. Um, she almost looks a little bit like 11. I see the ball. Yeah. 
right? 11? Okay, so we don't have a lot of Stranger Things. Let's do a reflector. I can make it angry at first. Yeah, you could be angry. No, you're like soft 11. Do you want the, the white card? You're like 11 when she's eating Eggos. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'll take a white card. This is the bronze color uh, <laughs> reflector card. You can get these. Uh, they're six, $600. Right? No, it's reasonable. <laughs> Special price. For Special price for you. <laughs> Made in Brooklyn, exactly. So we'll get this up. I'm holding it like Seth style. All right, here we go, focusing. Perfect. That's going to give us a little fill if we want it, right? Nice and easy. But remember that whenever you're shooting, you get paid the more lights you use. So we should probably use a light instead of the card. You could use a card, but you know, you can't charge for it. So we're going to turn this light on. I guess this is in standby mode. Yeah. So I guess I can change that here. So here, I'm going to click on this light, right? This is where I look at Jim like this. How do I turn off the standby? <laughs> I don't know. He's not going to help me. He is not. He is not. How do you turn this one off the standby? No, no, this guy's on standby, I guess. No, I think if, if you click on it, it will. Uh, yeah, it looks like, yeah, go back there, you're, you're red. You might have to re reconnect. You just do that? Yeah. They're asking if you're friends with Marissa because you've insulted her. I hate Marissa. <laughs> yeah. No, of course. I'm, I, I don't insult Marissa. No, it's really we keep things yeah. lighthearted around here. Um, I think you have to, you have to consider, though, no, before you say anything to... Uh, it's on. This one is on as well now. You want that on? Yep. Okay, okay so I'm going to make it complicated for you, though, Jim. I just want to turn this one off. Can I just stand by that light from here, or do I have to do the pack? Okay. So... What I want to do is I now want to fill my shadows with this large light source from the front. Because the light source is behind the camera, it's going to just throw light forward. So it's going to fill in every shadow. That's one reason why people like to use ring flashes, let's say, as fill. The problem with a ring flash for this, though, is the ring flashes will kind of light hard because it's tiny, right? This is going to, I'm using a soft light. I use a hard fill. It might look a little weird. This is a big soft fill is going to come in and clean it up. So what I want to do is get my exposure for this at where my shadows need to be, which is maybe like one stop under. So I'm going to meter this light only. Right, Just that light's firing. OK, so it's at 3.2. Oh, actually, that's turning that one up, too. So let's turn that one up, Dave, just that one. Uh, let's go up like a stop. That's it right there. OK, did it? Uh, one stop? One stop on that guy. A little bit more. OK, perfect. That's good. We're about to stop in a third under. So now let's turn both lights back on. Remember that when you're doing your fill light, you want to make sure that you turn off your other light. Otherwise, you don't really know what the power is. right? It's, it's important to know what each one of your lights is doing. This makes it much simpler than like going up and changing it on the pack. It will once we figure it out. Never show Daniel a new feature right before something starts. All right. All right, now we're going to try. Can we get this modeling light back up? Question online? No. OK, cool. All right, so we're back up. Did this light fire? This is how we do this. Any questions while we're, uh, does it make sense so far? Am I going too, too easy, too hard? Good. We're basically just turning the lights on and off at random. OK, sure. So the question is, can this be done with any camera or lighting? Just like everything that I do, yeah, the concepts are the same, right? What am I doing? I've got a, a, a decently sized soft source here. I've got a bigger one behind. You can do it if you only have a speed light, if you only have hot lights, if you only have inexpensive flashes. Yeah, sure, shoot with what you got, learn, get better. You get hired to shoot a makeup advertising job, that's when you want to step it up to the better equipment. There's reasons to have better equipment. A big part of it is consistency. Um, but yeah, don't not shoot because you don't have something. That would be silly. You're good to go. I'm ready. All right, so here we go. I'm looking through the camera. I'm going to focus. Good. 
All right. Nice. So again, now this is now with the, with the fill from the flash as opposed to the fill from the card. That's fill from the card. That's nothing. Right? Nice and easy. Now I know it's consistent. Now you could also, let's say that we, uh, why I would do this, right? Because you might be asking, well, Daniel, you just want to use a lot of equipment, which is true. You just want to, but there is reasons to not use, let's say, a reflector. If the reflector is at a certain angle, let's say, and Marissa gets, I start posing and she gets closer to it or further away or she moves, the reflector will actually reflect different amounts of light. It will not give me a consistent exposure. This light is far enough away from her that she can move around a decent amount and she'll always get the same fill from the front. That's why a fill light like this is different than using a reflector. That's why you would do it and you know, why you might want to do it. Make sense? Easy. All right, so now at this stage we have basic lighting up. Now we're going to actually look more precisely at the images because I want to look at the makeup. I want to see if anything needs to be changed. Right, and we're going to get a color card. That's not bad. So we, we, by the way, we intentionally went with this idea of like this kind of broken up pieces of the makeup around the sides to give kind of a fun look, which I think was a great idea by Suki. Good job, Suki. Yeah, Suki. You can find Suki at Suki.com. OK, so. <laughs> it's SukiX.com. OK. <laughs> OK, so. So, sorry, guys. Um, all right, so let's 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 look at the makeup. Does it look fine to you? You can come forward, Suki. Uh, do you want to gloss up the eyes? Yeah, I think this looks fine, and I think we can add the gloss now. I think everything looks nice. So we're going to add gloss to the eyes. Actually, how long will it last? Um, we can keep adding on top of it. Okay, and it won't be bad. Okay, so I'm asking that because there's more to this, right? But since I'm doing a class and you guys want to see this thing look better, I'm going to jump to the next stage. If I was doing this on a job, I would get everything in place. I'd have this thing lit with an assistant before the girl was even on the set. That's how you would want to do it. Because um, we are going to light the background. Right now, we've just got plain gray background that's getting a little bit of light from, the, from our uh, front light. But we're going to actually add to the background a, 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 another uh, Ceros uh, monolight with a P70 reflector. We're going to throw a burst of light on there, and we're going to actually probably up top and let it kind of fade down behind her. And I'm probably going to gel it up, I think, uh, with my chocolate gel. Can we shut the lights down? Yeah, you can kill the lights. Everything going smooth? Feeling it? You guys are excited? Yes. Are you looking for a specific value? Is there like highlights or the almost highlights in their face? Like on the skin? That's a good question. Am I looking for very specific values? I'm not, uh, to be honest. Because nothing, everything right now I can see is, is good enough. If I start getting to the point where I'm worried about it, then I'll look for values. Like, for instance, if my, once she puts this shine on, I might be close to blowing out, and I'm going to make sure that I'm not. But at this stage, I can see with my eye, because this is one reason why it's nice to shoot tethered, right, is I'm looking at the actual image. So I can actually see, like, you can actually see that Marissa has, like, a little scar right here on her forehead. Someday we'll, she'll tell us that story. Uh, I mean, you want your skin yeah, tones to be somewhere in the middle, uh, so 128. Oh, you mean where is it? Right there. They love you, Suki. Like you put that over it. Where's the information? Is here. Down here at the bottom, you can see you can see the numbers. You see that? Right, you see that? And then right then here you want somewhere in the middle, so you know. Or you could have your 128 ish. It would be gray. Uh, so around there is probably going to be safe. I go a little bit brighter on skin. Also, it depends on the skin tone, right? My skin tone is not going to be 18% uh, gray. I'm going to be lighter because I'm more pale. Somebody has darker skin tone. So there's no exact number. As long as you know that you are not going too far one way or the other, you should be fine. I will say, though, you may have on certain jobs uh, requirements, and they may give you that spec because of, of how they're going to use it. So that is something that could happen. Generally speaking, uh, I want to stay safe, right? That way. Like, I might, in the end, this might end up being much more contrasty, like, say, uh, to go on a web page and funky thing, but I'm going to shoot it a little flatter to be safe because uh, I want to make sure I have detail where I need it. Cool, right? Yeah. All right, is she shiny? Mm -hmm. Well, that was fast. Oh, perfect. Okay. I only put on the eyes. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, and we're probably going to have to do that half, like, yeah, well, a little bit less than that, with, with the chin up a bit. Let's just see what, we'll see what it looks like while Dave's setting that up. That light is still not... Uh, down a bit. Right there. Nope, you're good. All right, I'm just going to see what this is starting to look like. 
Good. With my terrible composition. Always good to shoot a bad composition. All right. right, so now we're getting, I can be glossier than that. Glossier. Oh yeah, hell yeah. This is a Hasselblad. <laughs> we're not messing around here. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go a little lower because I'm probably going to have a razor chin slightly. We'll see. Okay, the other thing I'm going to do now, because I know I'm probably not going to change this light at all, I've made that decision, color chart, right? Depending on what you're doing, you may want to use a full-on x right chart with all the colors, or this is just to give a base color balance. We'll hold it in front of her, her grill. You, gotta, you have to hold it up. So we hold it in front of her grill. We'll take a picture. Right, perfect. Now, if you want to use this for your histogram, this is a, uh, I think I did a video about this. If you go onto the onsets on Adorama TV, you'll see there's a video I show how to use this. But basically, if you, want, you can use it to get a histogram as well, because it's black, uh, white, and gray. I'm just using it for white balance, so I'm just going to grab my white balance. Do you be? That's a digital target by uh, pho uh, PhotoVision. It's a 14-inch digital target by PhotoVision. All right, and now I've set my white balance, which was pretty close already. I'm going to take a peek. There she is. Good. I'm, this, I'm not checking my composition right now. I'm just kind of looking at the makeup. Yep, she's looking less like an 11 year old. It's good. We can be shinier than that. Did she even make it more shiny? This is a hassle lot. I'm gonna keep saying that until it's too shiny. Then I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, we can go crazy. Do you wanna like dripping? Oh yeah, dripping. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean you've got, you know, Whatever, some kind of crazy amount of uh, whatever. But you're talking about, you know, 16-bit color. All right, so. Am I blocking most of the fill light by standing in front of it? Well, I am blocking some of it, but it's wrapping around me, and I, when I metered it, I was in front of her, too. So, you know, make sure that you're consistent with that. If I hid behind her when I metered the light, then, but when I, when I did it, if you remember, I was right here. So I was blocking it then, too. Okay, other questions? Plus, it's the cool photographer thing to stand in front of the light and you see yourself in the eyeball. Come on. There I am. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, for sure. Unfortunately, you're looking at uh, that's the awkward behind the scenes shot that you're required to take at all times. Yeah, I mean, this, this, yeah. If you want to see guys that are here uh, at the end, you can come up and look on the computer screen because it's, yeah, it's a world of difference. The monitors are not, uh, you can actually see these two monitors are not the same as, oh, that's why you sat in the front row. Smart. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, oh, yeah, there we go. Turn down a smidge. Okay, right there is good. Focusing. Okay. Nice. All right. There we go. All right. Oh, yeah. Okay, see, now I'm starting to get some highlight. I like that. We could actually be, actually go, I, I like that, but just kind of like do a little squint so I can see more of them. Like right here. Right there. Uh, a little more. Right there. Okay, good. Nice. So I'm having her squint a little bit because, uh, you know, that always looks cool. You're, like you're cool if you squint, but also because we can see the makeup more. Right? And see, here we're getting close. But again, I'm not going to be overly paranoid, right? Like, uh, this is supposed to be shiny. Now, if I couldn't, if I had lost all detail, I'd be worried about it. But that's actually well within, you know, because if you check, like, right at the brightest point, I'm still not blowing out. Like, I'm looking at my numbers at the bottom. So now's where I'm concerned. And I'm not concerned, you know? I am actually realizing, too, that I kind of, I might go horizontal, I might go vertical. I know it's crazy. <laughs> Going vertical. Oh my God. Okay. So you may notice too that I'm using a tripod, which uh, you might say, well, Daniel, why are you using a tripod with a tiny little camera? When you're shooting commercially, I think it's always a good idea to be on a tripod if you can be for consistency sake. So even though this camera is very tiny and I could easily hold it in my hand, it actually weighs less than my Canon. I think. Although I didn't look at the specs, but I think it does. It feels like it. it yeah. All right. Yeah. Oh, you got to change my composition a little bit. Yeah, this is good. I like it. 
And I even like that it's getting a little bit dark on that side of her. If you thought that shadow was too much, you could either add a fill reflector or I could even move this light over slightly. I like it. I think it's good as adding three dimensionality. What this is missing though is um, some light on the background, right? And we're ready for that. So now we're going to add our third light. Ready? We'll see. Uh, let's see. How do I bring that thing to life? I have to go back here, right? So I'm going to go back, and we're going to uh, we're going to turn it on. It's like booting up. So my phone does that too. It's ready now. Now I'm going to. Now I click on number one, Bron Studio One, because this is my first studio ever. My first studio, and I have Bron color. That's pretty good. Is the fill light behind me as unflattering as on camera flash? No. Because the thing is, is that this is large. It's also covering a large area. This would be closer to the effect, although nicer, to like a ring flash because it's flat. Now, flat might not be the best lighting for every person. If, I was, if this was my key light, it would change the whole look of this. It'd probably look good on Marissa because of the shape of her face, but a lot of people don't look good with completely flat light. Shadows are what shape our face. They can hide, they can highlight, they can also make things look terrible. So depending on the person's face, a flat light might be good. Um, sometimes if I'm shooting like uh, three quarter stuff that's a little bit more fashion beauty, I might do just a giant box behind me just to keep it really flat. But usually I'll use something punchier than a soft box, something like a para uh, from Broncolor. We don't have enough space for the giant para that I would want, so <laughs> that'll be another time. Maybe in the deserts of Las Vegas. We'll see. All right, so this light's back here. It's at 7.3. I'm going to meter it. So I'm just going to meter the background. Uh, can you fire it from there? I'll do it this way. That way I can just keep checking it. So I'm going to leave all the lights on because I want an overall exposure for the background. I want the background to be maybe like a, a, the same exposure as her. 10. OK, so I'm going to turn it down. Turn me down a bit, Dave. Oh, I suppose I could reach up and do it. But once you have electronic stuff, why would you do that? <laughs> Oh, actually, we're, we're shooting F11 now, right? So actually up a little bit is where we want to go. Yep. Perfect. She does have a long neck. Perfect. Where was it? Try again. Oh, hold on. Boom. A uh, tiny bit more. Give me one more tenth. Up. Up, yep. Uh, one more. Because the Broncola has Wi-Fi capability, Perfect. you can actually control every single head right from your computer or iPad. Yeah. Uh, it's set up an iPad. Can you also do that with your iPhone? Uh, so the yeah. Spread might not be that great, but we'll see. Yeah. Every menu item right from the iPad. Or yeah. OK, so we're set up here. I um, mean, as Jim's pointing out, because nobody online can hear Jim when he talks, so you guys are probably like, what's that sound in the background? Um, Basically, you could you could control Dave's controlling the power from the from the uh, computer. You could also control. Oh, that's kind of interesting. A little bright though. Uh, you could actually control it via an iPad. Is it does it work for the phone too? Yeah. Or your phone. You know, so if you're in a big studio, you could walk around with it in your hand. Like I, you can also control it uh, from the computer, like I was doing with Dave. Oh, I like this, but I think it's I actually kind of like. That was a happy mistake because it's not what I was going for, but I'll say that it was. This is what we're going for. <laughs> One of the beauties of doing something on your own, like a test shoot, let's say, because this is really, that's what it is. Nobody told me what to do here. You can do whatever you like, you know? I was looking for something more even coming down flat, but I think that looks pretty good. I think it's a smidge bright, so we'll just turn it down a bit, okay. um, which we can do from here. Yeah. You want me to angle it a little to the right to, to get rid of the, the No, no, I like that. Oh, okay. you like the hot spot? Yeah, I like that there's a hot spot behind the shadow side of her. I personally like that. Uh, if you don't like it, because it sounds like Seth doesn't, no, you could change the chain of light. Stop. <laughs> We'll talk about this later. <laughs> if you want to know what Seth really thinks, uh, tune much. in after. Uh, the on the Turn that back up. I didn't, I didn't change it. Right oh, that one, yeah. Five, oh, this is the one? It doesn't let me go. It does. Give it a moment. Oh, I see. It's got to go in. Okay, there we go. Okay. All right. Oh, because he's also changing stuff. No, I could. Uh, this is the overall power, so I could 
Yeah. You, I, I see what you're asking. Yeah. No. What you're saying is you have to wait for it. No. It, it no, changes when you shoot. Yeah. And it dumps automatically. Yeah. So I went down half a stop. Okay. So Dave went down half a stop on this. At this point, right? Here's one of the things that we like to talk about a lot: is light meters, right? Once I'm at this stage, I no longer use the light meter unless I add more lights. Because now I'm making a judgment call. I already know the light meter thinks that's correct, right? I think it's too bright for my taste. I'm now going to dial it down a smidge. So we did it from here, half a stop of power. We'll see what that looks like. If I wasn't shooting tethered, I would just meter it. But since I am, can you actually open your eyes for a second so I can focus? Here we go. Perfect. Close again. All right. The composition is bad. I'm just looking for the color. That's good. Maybe a little more. No, yeah. I think I like that. OK, now I think we're going to, OK, so a couple of things. I think it's good. Actually, let's go a little bit darker. Let's go half a stop down. I'm also going to slightly change my. No, I like the color. What the happy accident here was is that I thought the chocolate was going to be more warm, but because of the, the gray background and everything, it almost matches her shirt. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I did that on purpose. You know, I was planning that, even though I never saw her shirt before. All right, let me see, looking straight ahead, like here, and then down with the eyes. No, no, chin up, right there, and then eyes here at my end. Right there, hold. Perfect, focusing. So I'm focusing, good. Nice. Give her a little more space, put a little more centered. I think in the end I'd probably crop this end of it, but I'd rather have that back side of her head because I can't. OK, so now. Right now we're getting that highlight. Right now we get that beautiful highlight, and there's still detail there. Right? I'd love to have a little more. More cowbell. We're getting there. Questions, thoughts, concerns. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Oh yeah, what I'm saying is I'm, I would I kind of liked when she was right at the edge of the frame, when part of her head was cropped out. But to be safe, thinking more commercially, I'm going to leave space there because I can always crop it in post. I can't add the back side of her head back in. So I'm going to go a little bit further back than I think I need to be to give my, my uh, client, we'll say, space. Right? If I'm shooting something very specifically for me, I'll get right in there and, and, and crop it exactly the way I want. You know, Being old fashioned, not old like Seth, uh, like I used to 35 millimeter film, you want to fill that frame because you don't want to have to. You know, I got 50 megapixels here. I got, you know, th this is a Hasselblad. I'm not messing around. I got, I can shoot it wide and crop it in a little later. It is true, though, that the further away you get from your subject, it starts to change your perspective, right? So I don't necessarily want to move too far away because it'll throw off the, you know, the use of my lens. But I think this is a pretty good, uh, pretty good compromise. Questions besides that? What did we change? We changed something, right? Oh, you're changing the makeup. Laurie, it's going a little bit faster than I thought. Why is it happening so quickly? I don't know. Could it be the bronze color equipment? Might be. <laughs> Maybe it's your coffee. It's it could be the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so we're getting there, right? Nice and simple. We might have to funky it up. We might go funky. I don't know. Yes, Seth has an idea. It probably involves blood. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's a good model. Versus <laughs> I mean, like, I'm down for the blood. Yes, sir. Um, OK, so could you put, uh, yeah, I mean, a softbox. So to not exactly answer your question, but to answer it, the question is, is does this softbox have an adapter for speed lights? I mean, a softbox is a softbox, right? And then you get the speed ring that you need. So if you have a speed ring that's able to build a softbox that can take a speed light, yeah, you could do that. This is kind of big, I think, for the amount of power you're going to get out of a speed light. You know, you're, if you want, if you're shooting someplace where there's not a lot of ambient light and you're shooting relatively wide open or higher ISO, it's probably work with a single speed light. You might need multiples because you don't want to be cranking your speed lights to full power, which you might have to in such a big box. So it's a little bigger than I would use for a speed light. Yeah. Yeah, and you might not get enough. Uh, yeah, it would just be uneven, probably, because but you'd have to open it up. It just doesn't seem like it would be the best thing to use. Uh, so technically, yes, you could put a speed light into it. It's probably not the best thing. I personally like to use smaller boxes with speed lights, and I try to think about, uh, you know, we actually did a how to get the most out of your speed lights demo like three weeks ago. 
And that I kind of talk about like what sizes I think I prefer. So if you want a big one like this and all you own is speed lights and this is the job you have, maybe rent something. You know, you could rent lights uh, uh, just for this, this purpose. We're ready? Mm -hmm. Are you biting your nails? All right, here we go. All right. Wardrobe malfunction. Okay, face here. Uh, a little tilt like that. Good right there, perfect. Focusing. Actually open up for a second. Good. Uh, look right here, just with your eyes. It's easier for me to focus on her eyeball, that's why I'm doing that, and bring your eyes down. Good, here we go. If you notice, I'm having her open her eyes when I focus, because I'm using focus peaking, and it's easier to see the circles of her eyes, so that's why I'm doing that. Um, I want to make sure her pupils are in focus and not like the edges of her eyelashes, so I want her eye open when I'm focusing. Uh, if I was using autofocus, it probably wouldn't make a difference. Yeah, that way it's nice and sharp. Is that shiny enough for me? Is that shiny enough? Can it be more shiny? <laughs> Okay, glitter. All right, hold on. Let's take a vote. Glitter? <laughs> All right, we're going. <laughs> glitter is happening. <laughs> there is glitter happening. I'm going to warn you right now, for anybody who's leaving here today, when you go home with glitter on you and you have to make like an excuse for your spouse, you can be like, no, I was at the event. It's streaming. You can show them. I would reiterate this is a lighting demo, not a makeup demo. Right. This is definitely a, a demonstration for uh, lighting for beauty lighting. Uh, so I don't know much about makeup except for to tell the makeup artist to do cool things. But if you ask makeup questions, you can go to Suki.com and she'll hook you up. <laughs> Actually, it's makeup, it's makeup Suki uh, uh, on Instagram, right? Or, yeah. S-U-K, how else should we post Suki? I don't know, that's the only Suki that I would know. All right, questions though, that's not related to that. Yes, sir. Um, I, 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 they don't call it a shallow softbox. It's kind of their standard oh, brown color softboxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm not, this isn't about speed lights in softbox demo, so I'm not going to get into that right now. But uh, yeah, I'll stick with my answer there. But no, it's not considered a shallow box. Any other questions? Control with mono lights that have their any questions online? I don't want to get this, make this into a speed light versus hot light demo. <laughs> okay. Cool. You know what we can do too is actually to show contrast here. Actually, just so we'll, we'll start to deconstruct this light after we get the shot. We got it? Are we glittered? Yep. Yeah. All right. We're all glittered up. I'm going to get some glitter on me for the next demo. Okay. All right. Anytime, anytime you're ready. I'm ready. She has to get it. She has to find herself. OK. <laughs> all right, so let's see what this is going to do, because this could change up things a lot. Oh, wow, OK. That's good. That's good. Hold, hold. Focusing. Thank you. All right, down with the eyes. Here, right there, good. Nice. Okay. Let's see what it does. Oh, oh, oh. sparkly. Oh. Okay. Oh. Nice. Okay, cool. I don't know why it's making that weird thing. My computer's like, what's going on? <laughs> My computer's like, it's so many megapixels. It doesn't know what to do. <laughs> so much uh, depth. Okay, so, so there you go. So again, a big part of this uh, lighting that we're talking about here is I'm using large light sources and very diffuse ones because I'm, I specifically am doing shiny, right? That's the reason why I'm choosing the, the tools that I'm choosing. You have to think about the lighting tools that you're going to use based on the project you're shooting. In this case, a beauty makeup that's going to have shine. I know I want a lot of big areas, right? Shine or specular highlights are just basically reflections of the light, right? So the larger your light, the more it'll be even and spread out. And that's really the key here. And if we were to switch to something smaller, which we might do because I think we have time because I think we nailed that pretty easily. By the way, if you get the shot done too easy, it, you got to just drink more coffee to spread things out. You don't want to make it look too easy for the client. Uh, you know, make sure you do touch-ups so you complain a lot to the makeup artist, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, but since we don't have a real client, we'll just keep going. 
Um, all right, so let's do this. Let's make it a little bit more contrasty. Let's see how that affects this makeup, and what and maybe we'll like it better. Probably not. Uh, oh, are you doing something else? Oh, oh, Suki wants a good shot first. Hold on, let me make <laughs> let me make sure I actually get a good shot. It's always important to please the makeup artists, otherwise they kill you after. How much do I interact with the model? Not at all. Models are terrible people. I don't talk to them. No, it's not. No, I'm just I'm just kidding. Uh, so yeah, you want obviously models. I'll I'll take a, a ticket from what Seth says all the time, which is models are people, right? You want to make sure you engage with them. They're on your set, so. They're sitting there all day. You want to make sure you have a conversation with them. But again, beauty photography especially is pretty precise. So the idea that they should just sit on the set and just like goof around and stuff and laugh is different than, let's say, a portrait where you might just in interact with somebody and catch like a moment. Here I'm being much more precise. So I'm definitely posing her. We're not necessarily having as much just general conversation. Um, but sure, you want to talk to them first. You want to relate to them. You don't want them to feel, uh, you know, awkward. I mean, nobody's more awkward than Marissa, but it, you know. <laughs> Have I parted away from Pro Photo? I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> we'll talk to Jim after. <laughs> I gotta have, I gotta have a tip jar. Okay. All right. Here we go. Oh, oh, she went back to the eleven look. I like it. Good. Focusing. Right there. Hold. Okay. Let's see what that looks like straight on. Oh, it is very 11. Oh, it's kind of freaky. All right, so I think this is good. Let's make the shirt uh, uh, asymmetrical. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Perfect. I'm also going to switch closer, even though I just said that you don't have to do that because I contradict everything I say. Right there, good. Hold, good, focusing, good, 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 good. Chin down a smidge, right there. Uh, up is good, but just right there. Good, like that. Nice and simple, right? And again, like I said, the light stays even across her no matter where she moves. It looks pretty good. She's very 11-ish. Maybe she'll be 12 later. No. <sighs> it hurt, but nobody, okay, so let, let's just try a full-on profile, which is this, this is not lit for, but let's just see. Because I feel like it. Okay, I'm actually going to crap out the bun because that's not part of the hairstyle. I don't think. No, no, you're good. I'm just crapping. Focusing. Here we go. Oh, she moves. Uh, focusing. Here we go. Boom. This is not really lit for a profile, but I'll try it. Okay, not terrible. I feel like it gets a little too darker on the side of her face. This might help, but I don't think so. Oh, yeah. Look at you. Well, I get, we have Dave here. Oh, thank you. We, got, we have power, Dave. Good, good, good. Focusing. Wow. Right, here we go. And chin up a smidge. And focusing. And good. All right. Yeah, that helped a little bit. Nice. That's kind of interesting. It basically added a little bit of brightness into the eyes, and especially the back eye. Right. Good. Now, let's go the other direction, just because we have time. I'm going to go with a smaller light source, uh, to, which should make it a lot more contrasty. So I think we'll swap this for this. Oh. Ah, good. All right. This is the 35 by 60, not inches. Uh, otherwise, I'd be a giant. Uh, centimeters, I guess. Uh, softbox is a little baby softbox. Now, if we look at this compared to Marissa's head, still bigger than her head, but not tremendously bigger, right? So this is gonna be a harder light source. It's also gonna cover less area. Um, and we'll use this. This would generally not be my first choice uh, yeah. for a beauty I shot. Like Probably shouldn't do that with the modeling light on, but hey, why not? Yeah, you know. We like to blind ourselves around here. Right, so Dave's getting that on there. Right. Yeah. Close, but yeah, yeah, I think you got too much tilt going on. And do. Yeah. There we go. All right, good. All right, we're in there. We're good. We're going to go uh, horizontal with it. 
So we have some fall off. Can we drop it down a bit? Yeah, we'll drop it down. We'll get it nice and close. Cool, cool, cool. Typically, a soft box this size. Fall off. Uh, I use this size. Tilt. Okay. All right. So we're going to go back here and we're going to turn off our big old light, which is this one, I guess. Do we realize, did we figure out how to turn that off? Oh. More? No, well, it'll be this one, though. More. That's just that. Uh, Standby. Standby. There we go. There it is. So what it takes is actually being able to read to know how to use this. Cool. I am now just down to the small soft box, if I did that correctly, which it looks like I did. Why? Because if I just change the one soft box and nothing else, it's gonna, I'm going to figure out where I'm at. So it'll be, it's just simpler to turn this off. Uh, again, I'm at 100 ISO, 250 of a second. I want to get myself to F11. This one goes to 11. Color temperature of light. Okay, so the color temperature is, uh, well, these are uh, 6,000 or something for flash usually around. Bron color, you can actually tweak the color temperature in the pack, but we did do a custom white balance as well. All right, so we're at F11. All right, so we're at F11. Again, this is the Scoro uh, S. 3,200 because we don't mess around. 3, yeah, 3,200 watt seconds or joules if you're cool. Uh, yeah, you can increase or decrease. It takes, you can connect three heads to it. Okay. Each individually changeable. Now, uh, actually, I think I might do this. I like that. You would like that. Okay, the soft boxes are lined with silver and have two levels of diffusion. That's perfect, hold, 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 good. Okay, this is the small soft box. It's kind of cool, right? It works. It's different, right? It definitely adds a different feel to it. We can already see, actually do one with, uh, with your eyes, like how you were in the other one, so basically chin up a smidge and your eyes, there we go. Eyes closed a bit. Good right there, here we go. Right, so we can see the drama, you can see now, right? You see that the specular highlights are smaller because we have a smaller uh, box. It's still well within the, the, the range of acceptable. It's also out of focus for some reason. Apparently I didn't focus on that one, but hey, you know. Yeah. We can't focus on every shot. There we go. There we go. No, still out of focus. Why am I out of focus all of a sudden? What's happening? I'm losing my eyesight. All right. Did you adjust the diopter? I don't think so. You could also scan it. Yeah, I have the focus peaking on as well. There we go. All right. I think she was moving. Again, whenever there's a technical problem, what do you do? Blame, Blame, Blame the model. The model. <laughs> right. All right. So she was moving, so I couldn't get it in focus. Why do they pay models so much when they can't stay still? You know, that kind of stuff is good. That's usually the appropriate comments. Um, you can see because we're not floating the light above, it's not. It's to one side. We have a little shadow on one side of our face, which I don't mind. Uh, but if you did, you could get the light more centered. But you definitely can see the difference. I mean, obviously we have the light, uh, the light turned off as well, right? We can go like that, and like that. Oh, why is that one so big? There we go, right? And we got two different looks. Same makeup, different style, right? One's flatter. You can even see their face looks a little more round with the fill. Here it's a little bit more uh, thinned out, right? Because the light is so small, causing shadows on the side. Um, and I guess we can turn that backlight back on if we like that for the color. So we do that over here. That is this one. No, that is this one. Mm -hmm. nope. Oh, nope. Don't hit that button. Hit this one. It's the other one. Close up top window. It's the other one. It's this one? Yeah. Okay, that's the one. I'm going to turn off my standby. All right, that lights up. Yeah. All right, so now we're gonna fire the background light. Again, I didn't change my exposure. One thing that's important here is remember, I moved my light to match the original. 
Hmm? It didn't turn on? Okay. Yeah, because it's dark. It's black. Oh. No. It's on, right? Oh. It's a shot here, isn't it? It's a shot I just did. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was special. Last cool. Question was just too short for you to notice. Yes, it was fired like that. <laughs> okay, questions. You see how we changed that? Made it a little different? Does that make sense? Should we get even crazier? We got like five minutes. Let's do one more thing. We do have a, yes. a beauty box with water. I don't know. Yeah, I don't want to build anything else. Okay. I'm going to use the beauty dish in the next section. What's that? This will be at five minutes. Well, we're going to go back up at three o'clock. Yeah, oh. we'll go a little bit over. We take a break. <laughs> the models require a break. They're in the union. Again, playing the models. See how I did that? Okay, that's cool. I'll be more casual with this and maybe like a little bit to the side. Oh, yeah, like this? Yeah, yeah, why not? Yeah, like that, exactly. Uh, maybe. Yeah, exactly like that. Hold on. Let's see what that looks like. That's good. Yeah, that's perfect. Oh. You should probably lock the tripod down before you fall over. That's perfect. Do not move for 12 minutes. A little bit longer because the front row wants it to be longer. Okay, here we go. Yeah, there we go. Now. How do I make it so there's only one picture? <laughs> what did I do? There we go. All right, I want to get a little more of your head in there. I really like this, though. Suki's fixing stuff. That's good, though. You see what that looks like? Can we do that again? Yep. Okay, good. Another reason to be tethered. Okay, okay, here we go. This is it. This is the one, the only. Here we go. Hold. Boom, right? Harder light, punchier shadows, more contrast, in focus, detail in my highlights, tiny little softbox. Could I do that with a speed light? Yeah. I mean, that size. Not this. It only is a bron color speed light. <laughs> Don't have one yet. <laughs> Not have one yet, yeah. OK. <laughs> Other questions? <laughs> questions? Oh, I was going to do something else. What was I going to do? A fill. Oh, yeah, let's do a fill. Why not? All right, here we go. We'll try, yeah, same thing. So we can see the difference with the fill. There we go. Actually, just maybe eyes here, right there. Good, good, good. Hold, focusing. Here we go. Nice. Yeah, and a little fill light there. She's looking all edgy. <laughs> that is edgy. Yeah. Edgy Marissa. OK. <laughs> Other questions? Nothing. Well, these guys, we're either super clear or super confusing. I don't know. Um, let's though to answer kind of a question people asked before, I'm going to just use this box, right? Just because I can. I could rip the front baffle off, and I'm going to do that. That's what I'm going to do. But first, I'm going to do this. So I'm going to turn off my key light, which is this guy. I'm going to take my, I'll leave the background light on, so I'll stop doing what I was doing there. I'm going to turn on this guy. Oops. <laughs> By the end of this, I will have mastered how to turn the lights on and off. I know. It seems like it's a, it's a skill set. Believe me. All right. So this is going to be way underexposed, right? Why? Because it was our fill light before, right? I could just take a picture and try to figure it out and guess, but that wouldn't be very cool. So I'm going to use a meter. <laughs> I'll tell you what, when you're doing a job, right, because we're talking beauty photography, which is technically, you know, a kind of commercial photography. If you've noticed, maybe every shot that popped up on the screen wasn't perfect, but they were all pretty good, right? They were all exposed properly. They were all, if you start taking 17 shots to get the right exposure in front of your client, that's not going to build a lot of confidence. So this light meter, which is not that expensive, is going to save you a lot of grief. Um, this is only at 6.3, so I got to turn it up a smidge, which Dave can do. It's always good to have people do it for you. That also makes you feel like, you know, more important. Turn that light up, Dave, please. I would say you need to turn it up by two stops. Oh. I know. That's a lot of light. Can we do it? Roughly two stops. It's never really two stops. Shall we say that? I don't believe you. I'm going to give it to this. And you okay. <laughs> I don't believe you. Okay, a little more. 
Uh, about, about to stop. There you go, perfect. Oh, hold on. Did you change it more after I took the? Give it another try. All right, we're going to try it again. It was like right in between. We were in between. Yeah, it's a smidge too much. Go back to 9.1, I think. This one goes to 11, but we're only going to bring it to 9.1. Perfect. 11. Actually, that meter just permanently says F11 on it. It's not doing anything. Like, I'm literally just showing it to you when it says F11. All right, so we should be good. This is going to be flat light from the front. I'm leaving the background light on, right? Let's turn it off. We're going to be edgy. So look straight ahead. It's kind of warm, actually. How bright is this modeling light? 300 watts? 250. Wow, that's nice. You could. You could. This is bigger than most New York apartments, by the way. All right, so here we go. <laughs> here we go. So at me with your 11 face. Good. All right, so flat, right? Kind of scary, but this one you really see me in, so I like it. Right. It's a little underexposed, actually. So it's very flat, right? Not really my style. This might work for some things. Uh, I think it's a little bit too dull. Um, and uh, a little yeah, it's a little passporty. Um, if you want to set up the most expensive passport office ever, <laughs> you know, a score. Of, uh, actually, it's not even a score. It's a, a yeah, it's cheap. It is a little vampire-ish. Applying for a passport. A vampire applying for a passport. Perfect. I like it. But since we have that turned on, let's bring this one down one stop and let's turn this guy back on. And then we're going to use it as a fill light instead just to wrap things up. So we're going to go back to where we, from which we started. Yes? Um, I guess we don't see it anymore, but can you light out the imperfections in the paper? Or is it have to do with the Like, so the background paper from the, from the gel light, you know, you see it a little bit the way. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, yeah. Yes. Okay, so the question is, the background paper has waves in it. I can see it, right? What can you do? Well, if the light was, remember, I'm using a small light source, which means it's a hard light source, which means it's going to amplify shadows. My paper is not flat. You see shadows. That's what you're looking at. Two ways to kind of handle that. One is use a new roll of paper. I mean, the client's paying you. Come on now, right? Uh, way number two is to light it with bigger, flatter light, which then might be harder to do or impossible to do a spotlight like we did. Uh, the third way might be with depth of field. I could have, you know, maybe opened up a bit more, made it a little more shallow, maybe give myself more space. It kind of depends on what you're doing. I kind of liked that it was a little textury back there, so for me, I left it. I did notice that, but if you didn't like it, you were like, oh, I want more flat, uh, a fresh roll of paper probably would have done it for you. This roll of paper was put up in uh, 2014, uh, and we, you know. I, I hung this paper. Don't stop yeah. All right, 2015, to, yeah. They gave me one roll of paper a year, and I haven't got the 2018 roll yet. All right, here we go. That's good, that's good, very vampire -y. All right, good. Now, now we've got the fill light. This software is called Focus. This is Hasselblad's uh, tethering software. Hmm, the whole thing looks a smidge underexposed, but you know what? I can, actually, can I do it from here too? Is that screwed up? Okay, I can do it right from Focus. I can bring the whole set up. That brings every light up. That's pretty sweet, actually. You can do that, and there we go. There's my, there's my exposure, right? Now we've got fill light, and you can see both lights, actually. You can still see that little scar on her forehead. And there it is. It's a little bit of a kind of a flatter image. It's not, again, not the style that I would shoot, but some people like this, so uh, you can certainly go for it. I'm much more of this guy, you know, but how, whatever you like, right? Um, this is kind of more classic beauty, even though I use a softbox versus a beauty dish. Uh, or, you know, using the, the larger light sources in the beginning are also, you know, octagon is very nice, more commercial, right? It kind of depends on what you're doing. Um, but you see, even with the same makeup, we can have different interpretations. This one's much more like, you know, the, the, the poster at the end of the aisle at Target, right? You know, much more flat, like you're a teenage girl and you want to buy, or boy, I'm not, you know, whatever, and you want to buy makeup. This one's a little bit more, you know, Mac store, you know, it depends on your client, right? Right? The same thing, but that's basically the difference, right? 
uh, <laughs> it's all about client intention. <laughs> okay. Well, that, those are my extreme Fire angles, right? right? Right, exactly, right. And this one's more money, right? You get paid more, right? This one's shot in Paris, the other one's shot in Jersey. Whoa. <laughs> Ow. That's the extremes. Jersey and Paris. <laughs> Jersey and Paris. <laughs> Paris, New York. Technically. <laughs> or Paris, Texas. Okay, any questions? <laughs> questions? No. No question. It made sense? It made sense. Do you walk dogs? I do. Oh, awesome. That seems like a fun job. Well, well, maybe eventually. Uh, again, also, there, we always get that, whenever we use the more top of the line stuff, we get that thought process. Remember that if you're just starting, or you're doing as a hobby, maybe this isn't the stuff for you to buy right away, but as you build up through your career, uh, you know, this is like your end goal. This is the, the, the stuff that's gonna last forever, it's gonna have value. You could rent it if it's for certain projects, so don't be intimidated by the price point um, if you're just starting, because again, it's always available to rent, um, and, uh, you know, and you're not gonna, you know, something like this equipment is going to hold its value if you want to resell it or trade it in. It's also going to last a long, long time. So yeah, that, that's the value. That, you know, you're, you're changing cameras every two, three okay. years because the model comes out. So, lighting you're going to have for 20 years. Okay, so we're going to come back on at 3 o'clock on Facebook. So check out Adorama's Facebook. You'll see us at 3 if you guys want to do that. We'll come back if you guys want to come back. We're going to have Marissa here. We're going to do something else with the makeup or whatever. We're going to use a beauty dish because I know you're waiting for that. Uh, we're going to shoot with more brown color. Thanks, Jim. we got Hasselblad here. Make sure that you're on uh, my Facebook, if you guys don't follow me, Daniel Norton Photographer at 4.30, so that's going to tell me everything I did wrong, which could be fun. In March, end of March, we're coming back at 5 o'clock. So we're going to change it up a bit. So I'll miss you guys. In the meantime, do your In the meantime though, check me out on my YouTube, which is Daniel Norton Photographer. We're going to do some fun, non adorama friendly stuff uh, with a few different cool things. I have some stuff set up for you guys. You'll see lots of Dave, maybe, but definitely Seth. You'll finally get to see Seth. All you really see is his hands when he reaches up to change things. Uh, <laughs> he's, quite, he's quite handsome. So anyways, good. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Woo.